What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is another video about traveling to the beautiful state of Alaska. Today we are going to answer the question, what do I wear or how do I dress if I'm visiting Alaska in summer? This is a question that came up when I shared this video up here in which I talk about 10 things that you should know before traveling to Alaska, especially if you are traveling or visiting for the first time. And so today I'm going to share with you clothing items that I packed with me when I was in Alaska. Now, summer in Alaska is very different than summer in the lower 48. So sometimes it's sunny and beautiful out. Some other days it's cold, rainy, and you wanna make sure that you are as prepared as you can so when you're gonna start your research you will see that everyone is talking about the importance of dressing in layers and this is something that I personally learned when I started hiking and backpacking a couple of years ago and so why is it important to dress in layers the weather is changing constantly around you you can easily adjust and you can either put more layers or less layers so that you are more comfortable this is my system this is what I was wearing in Alaska and this is pretty much my system even for hiking and backpacking in areas where it's raining all the time when it's cold all the time and so I just add on or remove layers as we go so this is my base layer so I think it's important to have a base layer with you I love this base layer and it's probably you probably see it in every single hiking video that I have out there um, that's a base layer from uh, Colombia and there are a couple of things that I like about this one. Um, a, it's Omni Heat. So this material that you see here inside is very similar to what an emergency blanket looks like. And what it does, it just preserves and keeps the temperature of your body. So it works really well when it's cold outside. Um, I also like that it has, uh, what do they call it? This product incorporates an antimicrobial treatment. So it's got an antimicrobial, antibacterial treatment. Um, that doesn't let all of the bacteria grow and stick to the material. And this is important, especially if you're gonna be wearing the same layer every single day, which is very common if you are backpacking. Usually you wouldn't change and wear fresh clothes every single day. I also love the fact that it's got a collar. So even when it's cold, it protects your neck to an extent. So what I would do when I was in Alaska, I would have my sports bra, and this is what I would wear immediately on top of my sports bra. And in my day pack, whether we are going for a hike or we are going on a day cruise to see glaciers or even if we are ice climbing, I would always have an additional layer in my backpack. So this layer, very similar. It's also Omni Heat, same material, same brand, same everything. So that when it gets really cold, I can throw another layer on top of my main layers. And the system that we follow, the layering system, me and Alex, the exact same thing. So whatever I'm talking about here for women applies for men, except for the sports bra maybe. Um, but anyway, so that's the base layer. On top of the base layer, you want to make sure that you do have um, either a fleece jacket or a down jacket. So uh, this is my uh, fleece jacket. Uh, same concepts, also Omni Heat. I've been using um, this jacket for more than four years. It works great for me. Um, I've hiked in it in very cold temperature and it really works. So this is the down jacket, uh, the, the fleece jacket, or you can have something like this. This is uh, another jacket. So usually I would take this one with me on cold, in colder temperature. Like when we were in Yellowstone during winter, this is the jacket that I took with me, but that is the one that I took with me to Alaska and it works pretty well. Now, uh, because it's gonna be raining a lot of times, actually on every single hike that we went on, it was raining. You want to make sure that you do have a rain jacket with you. That's my rain jacket. Actually, it's one piece when you buy them. When I bought this, uh, this jacket right here, these are two pieces. And I love the fact that they are detachable so that if I just need the rain jacket because it's raining outside, I can wear the rain jacket. If I need the, uh, the fleece jacket, I, would, I could wear the, the fleece jacket, but uh, definitely wanna make sure that you do have rain protection of some sort. Um, the, the hoodie is gonna be very beneficial for you. So yeah, so that's the, the rain protection. Uh, what else? So yeah, for, for pants, instead of jeans, and that's my personal preference, and I think it's better to have some sort of athletic uh, pants. I love having hiking pants with me, and this is pretty much what I was wearing when I was in Alaska. And I would switch between thin hiking pants and thick hiking pants. So this would be uh, my hiking pants that I would wear 
every day, even if I'm just walking around Anchorage or Seward or somewhere in the Kenai Peninsula, I will wear this one. This is very lightweight and uh, very thin. Um, also, the other uh, thing that's very important when you are uh, packing your clothes for, for your visit to Alaska, you want to make sure that they wick moisture. Wicking moisture means that um, if uh, it doesn't keep, when you sweat, it doesn't keep all of the sweat, so it wicks the moisture to, to the surface of the material. And then uh, when it gets wet, it dries very easily. So these are two things that you should think about um, with, with your clothing, especially for um, hiking clothes. Um, so that's what I would wear. And then I have a thicker, version of my hiking pants this one right here so these are the pants i believe that i was wearing when we went uh, ice climbing because when you are ice climbing in the glacier uh, it's a bit colder in there so you want to make sure that uh, you're keeping your legs and uh, your upper body warm so i was wearing a thicker uh, version of hiking pants and then um, obviously if it's if it's colder what well, actually what i did when we were ice climbing i was wearing um an, an, an underwear a base layer uh, so that could be something like your leggings or some uh, um, actually my favorite base layer is very similar to to my other base layer but in a form of uh, pants I, I just can't find it here but that's what i would usually wear underneath my hiking pants and it works pretty well so just some athletic uh, pants or hiking pants will work fine with you. The other thing that you want to keep in mind, if you are taking um, any sorts of uh, day cruise or boat tours to go and see glaciers, keep in mind that once you enter the passage to get to the glacier and the closer you get to the glacier, it's going to get really cold. So inside the, the vessel or the boat, it's going to be warm and comfortable. But then once you walk out, to watch the glacier or spot some wildlife, it's, get, it's going to get chilly as you get closer to the glacier. So for that, it's very important to have some uh, uh, hat and gloves, especially gloves. So really important to have gloves with you. Also, if you are going on activities like walking on a glacier or ice climbing, you definitely wanna have gloves. Um, these gloves work really well. Um, the other thing, if you are crazy about taking photos on your phone or camera, especially phone actually, I love the fact that they have this uh, touch pad feature right here where you can still touch your phone and use your phone to take um, uh, videos. These are Alex's. When I was in Alaska, I don't know what happened to my gloves, so I ended up just buying a $5 pair of gloves from from some store this is what i was wearing most of the time and it worked uh, really well so you don't really have to have thick mittens during summer in alaska you pretty much just want something warm enough so that if you are in the vessel just like i don't know taking photos or watching with your binoculars that your hands are not getting um uh, super cold or uncomfortable the other thing that i would recommend for head protection you can have a hat with you i just like having a buff with me this is a thin version of a buff and this is a thicker version this is what you would how you would be able to use a buff i love buffs i think this is the my favorite piece of clothing when it comes to hiking so when it gets really cold out you can use it to cover your neck you can use it to cover your ears if you need a face covering when you are going to stores you can even use it to mask up and then when it's really cold you can wear it like this there you go so i would wear a head buff um, underneath my hoodie and that would protect me enough so that's a thin version if it's really cold out and uh, we took both of them to alaska i think i was using the the thicker version because i get really cold and i can even see in my ears they get really warm and red just use it like this to cover my neck or to cover my whole head There you go. <laughs> Next, socks. This is what I do, especially when I'm hiking and backpacking. I would have liners. Liners are very thin socks that you would wear. Mine looks a little bit dirty here, but I would have um, a thin liner. And then I would have thick wool socks. There you go. So I pack the two pairs or three, and that keeps me warm all the time. 
Okay, now when it's going to be sunny and beautiful outside, you can wear a t-shirt. I was wearing, wearing a t-shirt around Seward a couple of uh, days. Um, however, if you decide to walk by the water or later uh, in the evening, it gets pretty windy. So uh, on top of having your rain jacket and uh, your dawn jacket, maybe they will be a little bit heavier and thicker for you. You wanna make sure that you have a windbreaker with you. And that is my favorite windbreaker. I've been wearing this one for probably five, six years until I damaged it last time. Uh, we were on a horse riding adventure and there was a funny incident maybe that I'm gonna talk about later on, but this happened. But anyway, so um, any sort of um, windbreaker should be good for you. I love this one just because it's warm enough and it's very compact and you even actually have um, a storage case where you just put the whole thing into like a little sack. Yeah, and it doesn't even take that much space when you are packing. So forgot, almost forgot about shoes. I think it's important to pack a pair of hiking boots that is waterproof just because most of the hikes were wet. I, I can't even think of a hike that where it wasn't raining, to be honest. I don't know if it was just us because we attract a lot of rain, but I think the conditions are wet most of the time. So. Uh, waterproof shoes are going to be helpful uh, when it comes to activities like walking on glacier or ice climbing if you are going with a company they are going to be most likely or i think 100 percent they are going to uh, provide you with the shoes that you can rent shoes that are rated for that type of activities but as far as hiking or backpacking or just like you know walking even even if you are walking in the city to be honest if you want to have a pair of running shoes you can do that. I will probably have one with me, but that's the, the pair of boots that I'm wearing on pretty much every adventure. This is how I dressed when I was in Alaska, and this is pretty much what I wear even when I'm hiking and backpacking. I hope that you guys found this to be useful, and I hope that it answered your question. And if you did find it to be useful, please give this video a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know if you have any additional questions in the comments. My name's Habiba, this is Trekking Pals, and I will see you very soon on a new adventure.